My name is Lawrence Kent. I'm a senior program officer at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in the Agricultural Development Program. I think cassava can make a major contribution towards achieving those goals. They're very ambitious goals. Uh, I don't know if any one program is going to achieve all those goals, but TAT is well positioned to make a big contribution. And I think cassava within TAT can make a contribution because it's basically the second most important source of domestically produced food in Africa. And there are millions of Africans who are already growing cassava, but their levels of productivity are not as high as they should be. And so through investments that are made available through the TAT program, I think there's an opportunity to bring new technologies, new methodologies to African cassava farmers that will improve their productivity and thereby improve their, uh, their incomes. And that'll be part of the agricultural transformation for Africa. There's a suite of constraints that are constricting and limiting productivity of, of cassava farming. Uh, some of them have to do with the, the germplasm itself, the types, the cultivars or varieties that are being grown. There's still many farmers who are growing old cultivars that could be potentially replaced by new ones that are more productive, more higher yielding and more disease resistant. There's also the questions around agronomy. A lot of the uh, process of, of, of planting and uh, fertilizing and harvesting uh, cassava could be modernized as well. Uh, one area where we've seen great possibility for improvement is in, in weed management. Uh, to move beyond uh, using hand weeding with a, with a cutlass or a hoe to actually using uh, improved agronomy, mechanical approaches and chemical approaches to weed management. Uh, we've seen results presented at this conference showing how good weed management can actually increase yields by up to 50%. So, there's a number of measures that could be taken and then you can go beyond them even into linking smallholder farmers and producers of cassava to, to processing opportunities, to value addition opportunities, to trade. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of headroom and a, a lot of room for uh, growth for African cassava farmers. Well, I think uh, you can look at them one by one. Uh, so if you take, for example, um, <clears throat> efforts to improve cassava seed systems. Uh, if we're going to get new cultivars, new varieties into the hands of African farmers and open up those choices, we need functional seed systems. So if that's an intervention that's supported, for example, by a TAT loan or, or TAT technical support, I think then we look at it specifically. What were the targets in terms of amount of seed produced, amount of seed sold, amount of seed planted, and then what was the impact on, 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 on yields? So some of that can be tracked through a monitoring system and then some of it through a survey, for example, uh, to measure the impact on yields. And I think that's probably true for all the interventions. Uh, one can do it sort of more precisely, I think, probably looking at them uh, one by one. And the key variable almost always is going to be uptake. Uh, are we successful, are African governments successful in making the technologies available, not just to hundreds of farmers, uh, but to millions? And, and when we achieve that, I'm sure these technologies can really improve yield and overall production on a national scale. The Foundation's involvement in the TAT program I think is primarily through the projects that we've been funding over the last 10 years that have been developing a lot of the technologies that we hope now have been proven at a pilot scale and that the TAT program can now work with governments to, to scale and make them available to, to more farmers. Uh, so some of the, for example, the Gates Foundation provided a lot of support for efforts to develop vitamin A cassava. And now there need to be programs, national programs, to multiply those materials and make them available to farmers for uptake. We're hoping the TAT and the, the members of the TAT uh, program will be able to scale those technologies. So that's, I think, our major contribution. We've also provided a modest amount of financial support for the TAT Clearinghouse. And we're hoping that that support will be used for vetting the technologies, deciding on which ones are the best fits in collaboration, most importantly with the governments themselves, about helping them get the information so they choose the technologies that are the right fit. And then also we're hoping that our support for the TAC Clearinghouse also facilitates linkages to other programs that can add value, such as AGRA, the Alliance for the Green Revolution in Africa. Mm -hmm.